My name is Ulrike Kornig. I'm leading the governance group at the Mercator Research Institute on Global Commons and Climate Change. And in this group, we are interested in uh, international climate change economics, um, focusing on how heterogeneous actors can come together and cooperate uh, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Cooperation is a big issue in reducing climate change. And this can be illustrated quite well through the burning embers diagram of the IPCC um, last assessment report that you see here. Um, what is shown here are five areas where nature and uh, humans are impacted through climate change. And here, um, what is shown in the uh, black line is that if we don't take action, we uh, increase the global mean temperature by roughly four degrees Celsius. And now, um, when we uh, cooperate, we would want to bring down that climate change uh, to lower degrees Celsius in order to um, increase our well being around the planet. And the um, first target that the international community is looking at is reducing climate change to two degrees Celsius or even uh, well below that at 1.5 degrees. And what you see here in this figure is that by doing so, we significantly reduce the risk that we expose all of uh, the entire planet, meaning the entire humankind, um, um, in all of these areas. And now the uh, cooperation task is that we all have to work together in order to reach these temperature goals. And here you see in, the, uh, in this figure, um, the cumulative emissions in CO2 for a couple of scenarios. And the black bar here is the two degree scenario and it shows how much CO2 emissions we are still allowed to put into the atmosphere until the end of the century. If we want to reduce climate change even to 1.5 degrees, we have uh, a, a lot less budget uh, here just below 600 gigaton CO2. And now we can compare both of those targets to what countries have put on plate and what they have pledged. And you can see here, over the next decade, we are using up much of the greenhouse gas emissions we can still put into the atmosphere in order to significantly uh, limit climate change and therefore increase our well-being. And uh, this task becomes even more dire when we look at what countries are actually doing. If we look at current yearly emissions, we are at roughly 40 gigaton CO2, which would quickly eat up large parts of the budget we still have left in order to reach our task as the global community to come together. The Paris Agreement was really a success when it happened in 2015. After the failure of the Kyoto Protocol in reducing emissions and the negotiations at Copenhagen, it was really a miracle that the international community got together and agreed on a, a global mechanism for cooperation. And the two degree Celsius target as well as the 1.5 degree Celsius target are a success of the Paris Agreement in that all of the countries in the world agreed on those temperature targets. Also the targets that were shown on the previous slide are the 2030 targets of the Paris Agreement and here this new global governance architecture got the world together and um, committed or tried to commit all countries of the world in reducing their emissions. But uh, the Paris Agreement has more work to do. And that is because the targets that are on the table right now are not sufficient to reach the temperature targets. A very significant reason that we are working on in the governance group at MCC is that the Paris Agreement relies on voluntary emission reductions. So we do have these global temperature targets 
Um, but then in order to reach those targets, the Paris Agreement merely asks countries to decide themselves in how far they want to reduce emissions. And this leads to significant incentives to free ride. So when um, Europe, with the new Green Deal, decides to significantly reduce their emissions, then another country could increase their uh, emissions, reduce their ambition in climate policy, and the outcome for the global climate would be the same. And this is what, in game theoretic terms, leads to free riding incentives, where countries can rely on other countries to reduce their emissions and still enjoy the benefits from a stable climate. We can increase international cooperation and ramp up ambition in climate policy across the planet is a critical question that we are investigating at, at MCC. And here we have developed a proposal that relies on uh, introducing carbon prices in, uh, in all countries of, of the world. So the way forward would be to internationally harmonize uh, carbon prices that are implemented. As soon as possible, this would mean that we need to at least start at 40 US dollars per ton of CO2 as a carbon price, which was re recommended by Sturm and Stiglitz. And, uh, and this carbon price would then be rising over time. What is the advantage in increasing cooperation of introducing carbon prices? Well, first of all, they drive energy investments, which means that they make uh, less energy intensive and therefore emission intensive um, um, carriers more profitable and therefore drive down emissions. Second, a carbon price is transparent. The, uh, one of the problems that the Paris Agreement faces is that the targets that are put on the table are not very transparent. Um, there is a mechanism for transparency being implemented. And as MCC, we propose a complementary measure to this transparency, which is to introduce carbon prices because they uh, immediately, one value of that indicates the ambition of the country and uh, this value can simply be implemented through a carbon tax in a transparent manner or a, an emissions trading scheme with a minimum carbon price. Lastly, and maybe most importantly for cooperation, a carbon price is comparable. So uh, um, while an emission reduction target of 10 um, uh, million tons of CO2 means something very different for a large country like the US uh, compared to a small country um, like Bangladesh. A carbon price of the same value indicates a comparable uh, level of emission and it allows to counteract free riding because through it the principle of reciprocity can be implemented, which means that I will um, implement ambitious climate policy only if other countries do the same and therefore reduce free riding incentives. The carbon prices are implemented all over the world, which is what you see on, the, on this slide here um, that, that comes from the World Bank, where we have many initiatives of carbon pricing that are already implemented or that are uh, being in a state of, of, of exploration or are aimed at being implemented in the future. And as MCC, we propose to use um, these initiatives all over the planet in order to harmonize carbon prices and increase ambition. Now, increasing carbon prices in this system is a very challenging task. And that is because uh, the current targets, which you see on this slide here, translated to carbon prices, are very diverse. We have um, low ambition and high ambition. But what we really need in order to reach the two-degree target is a, a heavily increased uh, level of uh, CO2 prices all over the planet in order to reduce emissions sufficiently to uh, uh, reach the two-degree target. Reciprocity is one of the arguments why international carbon prices harmonizing and ramping up over time reduces free riding incentives. But in, in, at the MCC, we are working on further 
um, institutions that stabilize the system and reduce free riding incentives. And here uh, we have um, investigated how one institution that is already implemented can be developed further in order to reduce free riding incentives. And this is climate finance. Um, it is already a multilateral instrument across the corporation. So we have the Green Climate Fund in place, and this fund is dispersing transfer payments across the world in order to reduce emissions and also to finance adaptation measures. Now, at the MCC, we have looked into how uh, this Green Climate Fund can be changed into a system that is better able to reduce free riding incentives. And what we did here is we first looked at transfers that do not depend on emission reductions directly, but depend on national carbon prices. And here, countries receive transfer payments as they ramp up their national carbon price, leading to an additional incentive to increase prices to receive larger payments. Then we have looked into how the system could be optimized in order to reduce free riding incentives. And in a recent paper um, that we published in the European Economic Review showed that transfers that balance the cost of reducing emissions across countries can lead to cooperation. How does this work? Well, it again relies on uh, manifesting the principle of reciprocity. So if you're a country participating in this uh, Green Climate Fund and you, you increase your national carbon price and therefore have costs of reducing emissions as you significantly have to shift your economy away from fossil fuels, then uh, you are receiving higher transfer payments from those countries that are having a lower price, having a lower cost of reducing emissions, and therefore a system of reciprocity results because you are providing uh, emission reductions and stabilizing the climate for all other countries and are being rewarded from those countries that have lower emission in stabilizing the climate. <laughs> I believe that the climate problem is new to humankind, the most challenging um, that uh, the world has faced, which is global cooperation uh, in reducing emissions. And we have to be innovative, think about new institutions, new policy instruments that set the best incentives um, for our countries, our global leaders and ourselves to reduce emissions. And here we have to rely to a certain extent on trial and error. And so I am optimistic because uh, humankind is very innovative and I'm quite hopeful that we will come up with a new solution over the coming decades to solve this very uh, complex and challenging problem.